Welcome to my lecture online. Some of you might say, well, I don't believe in the Big Bang. How do we know it even happened? Was there such an event? Well, there was something at the beginning of the universe, and based upon the observations that we can make today, quite a few things are lining up and are piecing together to ensure that something like the Big Bang must have happened. The very beginning and the details of that are still kind of fuzzy. We may not ever really know what really happened at the very, very beginning, but at least based on the observations, we can make some very strong assumptions that explain some major things about the universe today. So again, we go back about 13.8 billion years ago, where we assumed there was a region called the universe where only energy existed. How big that region was? It's anywhere from the size of an atom to something really big we really don't know. I tend to believe that it wasn't as small as the size of an atom, but that would go against many, many very famous scientists who claim it was that small. I see some problems with that part of the theory, and we'll talk about that in some future videos. But let's assume that we can all agree that at some point only energy existed in the universe. That is a fair assumption. And we also know that the temperature depends upon the wavelength of that energy. All energy is made up of waves, and when the wavelengths are short, the energy is very high. So when we have a wave of some sort of electromagnetic radiation, that's what energy is, the shorter the wavelengths, the higher the temperature, and we can see that from this equation called Wien's Law. And the wavelengths were so incredibly tiny at the very beginning that the temperatures of the universe were absolutely phenomenal at the very beginning. We had this super, super hot universe filled with energy. That's a fairly good assumption. Now, what happened with all that energy? Well, we discovered, to Einstein, that energy and matter are simply two different things of the same, well, two different forms of the same thing, essentially. We have discovered that energy can turn into matter and matter can turn back into energy. And so what we assume is at the very beginning, as the universe was beginning to cool down, because as the universe expands, it causes the wavelengths to become longer. As the wavelengths become longer, the temperature begins to drop. And so during that very initial stage of the universe, as the universe was expanding, the temperatures began to cool down. But as long as they were more than two trillion degrees, that energy could actually form those big heavy particles called baryons among protons are among that set of particles. The heavy particles could be produced by energy that was over 2 trillion degrees in temperature. So we assume that there was some time in the very early stages, for maybe a few seconds, that the universe was indeed at that tremendous temperature and higher. So these particles were formed, and then as the temperature dropped below 2 trillion degrees, no more of those particles could form, and so whatever was left over after the annihilation of the particles and antiparticles, which we have to talk about in more detail later, but at some point, the entire universe had all of the matter that would exist for essentially eternity. And so that is what is going on today. All the, energy, all the matter you see, all the stars and the galaxies, were formed in those very first few seconds when temperatures was beyond 2 trillion degrees in the universe. As the universe continued to cool down, between 2 trillion and 2 billion degrees, smaller particles could form, such as leptons, which essentially are what we call electrons today, which is a subset of those leptons. Again, there were electrons, particles, and antiparticles, positrons, and they annihilate each other, but at some point we have a surplus of electrons, which we don't know how that happened, but it somehow happened. We'll talk about that in more detail. And then we had all the protons and all the electrons the universe would ever have. Because once the temperature dropped below 2 billion degrees, electrons could no longer be formed, and it's way too cool for baryons to form, for protons to form. So as the universe continued to decrease, and we know that must have happened because the universe is expanding, was expanding then, is it still expanding today, it's still cooling down, we're on this what we call cool-down curve. Well, between 2 billion and 10 million degrees, the universe must have been kind of like the core of a star. It must have been very dense, protons would have been very close together, the temperatures were tremendously hot, so the protons would move at very high speeds, and they would collide with each other and fuse 
hydrogen into helium, exactly what happens at the center of stars today. But at a super fast pace, because temperatures would be so enormous for that short period of time, that this was happening at a furious rate, and in roughly, because we calculated how long that period should have lasted theoretically, roughly about 20 minutes, about one quarter, 25% of all the hydrogen had formed into helium, and that period is named nucleosynthesis. So the universe, for a very brief period of time, was assumed to be like the core of a star, of a single star, but vast in region, that very quickly turned a quarter of all the hydrogen into helium. Good thing that it stopped after a quarter, because if it had kept going, and all of the hydrogen would have turned into helium, we wouldn't have existed. Wow. Because then, stars couldn't exist like the sun, and we couldn't be living on a planet near a star that was necessary for life. So good thing that's only a quarter. And now the stars, of course, in their cores are continuing the process, turning all the remainder of hydrogen all into helium. That's the process in what we call main sequence stars, like our sun, that are perfect for living nearby to be nice and warm and have all the energy that we need. But that stopped after the temperature dropped below 10 million degrees. And this period, from the very beginning of the universe to this period when nucleosynthesis stopped, was assumed to have taken about 20 minutes. Wow all that activity in this very short time span. Then for the next 380,000 years, and I didn't, didn't write it down, so let me write it down, 380,000 years, for that long period of time, the universe continued to cool until it reached a temperature of 3,000 degrees. At 3,000 degrees, it's cool enough for the electrons to join the protons, the electrons to join the helium nuclei called alpha particles, and so then from ionized hot material moving around the universe, all of a sudden you had order in the universe where the electrons joined to protons, the electrons joined to alpha particles, and now we had atoms and the energy that was left over, and now that's the critical part, because there was so much energy initially that only a portion of that energy turned into matter, there was a lot of that energy left over. That energy was moving around, bouncing between the protons, the electrons, and the alpha particles. But once they joined together, now that radiation could just freely move through the universe unhindered, and that's called the decoupling period, where energy was now free to roam through the universe. Guess what? That energy is still out there today. But what's happened is, since the universe continued to expand, that energy continued to get stretched by the expanding universe. So the energy that was initially about one micrometer in length, which is one one thousand of a millimeter, has since grown to about one millimeter in length. So it has grown a thousandfold from this period. And therefore today, based on Wien's law, as the wavelength keeps getting bigger and bigger, all that vast amount of energy that was left over from the very beginning of the universe as it has stretched to a length of one millimeter, which is like microwave length, microwave radiation, kind of like what you find in your microwave oven, so to speak. The temperature today in the universe has dropped to about 2.7 Kelvin, 2.7 degrees above absolute zero. So it's frigidly cold out in the universe now because of that stretch and that expansion of the universe. So, how do we know that happened? Well, today we can have telescopes that look out into the universe and we see that radiation coming from all directions of the universe. It is moving to the universe in all directions, from every location in the universe to every other location in the universe. So on the Earth, we are bombarded by that energy from all directions, and we can assume that's the case out throughout the entire universe. That's the leftover from the big event where energy created matter the temperatures cooled sufficiently so no matter could be created anymore. All the matter that exists today was created in the first few minutes of the universe and the leftover energy is still out there roaming around, slowly being expanded by the expanding universe. That's how we know the Big Bang is a good theory and even though we may be somewhat a little bit wrong in some of the details, especially in the very early part of the Big Bang theory, it is a pretty good theory that seems to hold water with all the observations that we see. The fact that a quarter of all the hydrogen turned into helium, the fact that it, the decoupling happened about 3,000 degrees, that it now stretched down where the temperature now is 2.7 degrees, where the radiation that was there in the beginning of the universe that created all the matter is still floating around in all directions. And what's key about that, 
radiation, we call that the CMB, the Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation. It is the exact same wavelength everywhere in the universe. The exact same wavelength. When the whole universe dropped below 3,000 degrees, at that moment, all that radiation was the exact same wavelength. And it's been stretched by the universe to what it is today, about one millimeter length. Again, the exact same wavelength in all directions we look. Say exact same, there's slight fluctuations, but essentially the fluctuation is so minor that you could say that it's uniform in wavelength all throughout the universe. And that's how we know that's the leftover from that Big Bang. That's how we can say something like the Big Bang happened, whatever you want to call it, and however it was caused to happen. So, how do we know the Big Bang is real? Because of what we observe today.